Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Kubuntu 16.10. Now this is an interim release of Kubuntu which will be supported for the next nine months. So this is a bit of a bizarre situation because although I'm reviewing an operating system that at time of recording is one day old, it is already out of date for me. Now in terms of the KDE desktop, it is running Plasma 5.7.5. On KDE Neon, which is a rolling release for the KDE desktop, I'm already running 5.8.1. So it's out of date for me. <laughs> this is a bit unusual. So I'm already very familiar with the desktop. I've been running it for a while. So let's take more of a look at it. So Kubuntu 16.10 is codenamed Yakti Yak. You can see in this version we're using the KDE Plasma 5.7.5 with a Qt version 5.6.1. So initially when I started with Kubuntu 16.04, I had all sorts of problems with the stability. I kept getting panels disappearing and the occasional crashes. So that was pretty bad. So I tried backporting the Plasma 5.6, and I think it was 5.6.3 at that time, and it got even worse. Literally, it was almost unworkable. And that is when I moved to KDE Neon. And with the 5.7 release of Plasma, the desktop stability really improved. So this is a bit weird situation. It's hard to tell exactly the hardware combination that actually causes problems with KDE. All I know is that some people suffer it and some people don't. And it's not like you can say, oh, every single NVIDIA user suffers problems with it or every single AMD user suffers problems with it. Uh, it didn't seem quite as simple as that. And when I showed a video of how to fix the tearing for NVIDIA users, someone with, uh, I think it was an NVIDIA 900 series graphics card reported that it didn't work. There are further settings you can configure within the KDE configurations for the compositing. So that might help make a difference, depends literally on your system and the capabilities. Now I know that was rather in-depth for uh, a small introduction to it, but what I would like to say is in terms of stability within the KDE Plasma 5.7 series, the only crashes I get are when I run VirtualBox. Now not when I run the distro in VirtualBox, but when I run VirtualBox as the host. And that's only the occasional crash. Literally I'll just flicker once, I'll get the crash dialog up here, and that'll be it, I can carry on working. It should be a lot better than Kubuntu 16.04 was. So that is a positive change. In terms of other changes, uh, well, no, there's not really a lot. It has a newer version of the kernel, 4.8, and that's it. That pretty much concludes everything. Let's look a little bit further at the operating system. Why do I like KDE so much? Well, more about the flexibility of it. Look, I can right click on the launcher here, go to alternatives, and I can switch to a dashboard. Switch, so when I reopen it, so there you go, now I have a dashboard for the interface on the application menu. Now the speed that KDE Dash and the original application menu work at in finding applications and documents on your system is astounding. I wanted to talk more about this yesterday in Ubuntu, but I thought I was hurling too much abuse at Unity. So let me show you what I mean. This was a search I did yesterday in the Unity desktop, and it brought up two results. This time, it brings up a full screen, and I didn't need to shorten any sequences there. There's no additional information available like you would get when you right-click on an application or document in the Unity launcher. No, you get the option to open it or disregard it and move on to something else. So, opening it. Yep, there you go. Quick and responsive. Quite often I find myself just using the dash to open a document. I don't go navigating for documents nowadays, I use the dash. So you can use this search on the right hand side to navigate down to well, either all applications or specific categories. You can see how quick and responsive it is when I just move the mouse over it. I think it's worth taking a quick look at what applications we do get on the system, because when I would like to compare it to KDE Neon, which is a very minimal system, it's kind of a nice alternative to see what you do get in comparison on the likes of Kubuntu, which is, it is a basic KDE distro, but they do set up some of the operating system for you. Like in the graphics, we can see we have Gwenview and part of LibreOffice. Under internet, we get quite a few applications here. We've got Firefox for your web browser, you've got Kmail, Ktorrent, a few other things. Multimedia, you've got Amarok and Dragon Player. Office, you've got a partial suite of LibreOffice and Kmail. Settings, yeah, that's just system settings. Uh, system, nothing that special. Utilities, 
yeah, nothing too special there. The last button here is the power and shutdown options, which you can use to suspend. Because as you can see there on the bottom left hand side, the shortcuts doesn't give you the option of going to suspend. You have shutdown, reboot and log out. And you can easily change favorites around. You can right click, you can remove from favorites. And if you just find another application, right click and add to favorites. And you can also add to the panel as well. By default, you have this uh, not cashew on the desktop. You can get rid of it by right clicking on the desktop, going to desktop settings, tweaks, and you've got this desktop layout, show the desktop toolbox. So just move that away, apply, you can see it's gone. So we have a much cleaner desktop now. In terms of wallpaper that's on the system, that's just the stock KDE wallpaper. Looking further at the default setup, this panel on the bottom of the screen houses the time, date and calendar and the status notification section, which covers all these icons. If you have the panel shrunk down, it will resize the panel to an appropriate size to house these system notifications. I think that was one of Plasma 5.7 versions that brought that feature in. You can see KDE Connect mentioned here. So if you have an Android phone, you can install the KDE Connect app from the Android Play Store and you can get notifications from your mobile. For instance, when you receive texts or a phone call, in terms of the system settings, I'm not going too far into it because I've covered this in other videos, but uh, just a quick look at the look and feel section. You've got the easy option to select between a light and a dark theme. The breeze theme was significantly improved as of Plasma 5.8. It is much more consistent now across the Qt and GTK applications. Looking at themes, yes, you have a few themes available. You can also get new themes and it goes, oh, should get new themes. What's happened there? That is the first time I have seen it fail. That's a bit embarrassing for a video review, isn't it? Uh, HTML error 401 means unauthorized. It needs a username and password. Uh, no, it doesn't. One moment, I just want to go across to KD Neon and just check this feature is actually still working. So go into the desktop theme, uh, get a new theme. Okay, it appears to be an issue with the website at time of recording. So I have shown that feature working in other distros. It is not an issue specifically with Kubuntu because that should work right here in KDE Neon as well. So that's an issue at time of recording. So overall, I'm happy with the way that Kubuntu 16.10 looks there. So they're giving you a fairly simple KDE desktop, which you can build up yourself. They've given you enough applications to get you going. That is the complete contrast with KDE Neon. KDE Neon is a very basic system that you do have to build up yourself. The distro you choose depends more on your skill level. If you're relatively inexperienced, I would take Kubuntu, or even I would look at something like Solid K. If you're more experienced and confident, then I would seriously consider KDE Neon. But thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.